The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the hosts and guests may or may not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Miami University. I am going into my last semester of chemical engineering. I'm a senior journalism major. And I'm minoring in supply chain and operations management. I'm a biochemistry major. Classes are going great. Extracurriculars are going great. I'm an RA on campus. I'm thriving. Hi, I'm Jason Megacy, and this is Major Insight. This is the podcast where we talk college life with amazing students about how to find your place and purpose on campus. Now imagine this, smart prosthetics that anticipate and respond to the user. Imagine unlocking the secrets of human balance inside virtual worlds, or even combining computer programming with genetic engineering. Now I know it may sound like science fiction, but it's all part of the college experience for Gabe Lenneman. Gabe is a senior studying biomedical engineering and bioinformatics, but he also finds time to play varsity esports and compete on the water ski team. Gabe Lenneman, my friend, how you doing? Not too bad. Thanks for having me on, man. All right, of course, of course. This is the inaugural episode of season three of Miami University's Major Insight. Um, So Gabe, why don't you just introduce yourself a little bit? Yeah, so my name is Gabe Lenneman. I am a uh, junior biomedical engineering major with a uh, minor in a bioinformatics just been uh, having a good time doing schoolwork and busy but having fun at the same time for sure originally where are you from kind of just walk us through Mm -hmm. um you know your process to get to miami Yeah, so I'm from Lansing, Michigan, and I actually first heard of Miami from my dad. When I was in high school, I originally thought of I was only going to apply to three schools. Whatever ones I get into, I'll make my options there. But my dad really convinced me to branch out a little bit. He told me to look at schools out of state, and then he told me about Miami, showed me pictures of the campus, and I was like, that looks like a fun school. You Mm -hmm. know, I may as well apply. Got in, and it ended up working out really well, and it's probably been one of the best decisions I've made so far. For sure, for Mm -hmm. sure. Did you? So did you get a chance to come to campus? before so I I did one of the make it Miami things mm-hmm. and after that I almost like enrolled like that same day I was yeah. here but my parents were like no 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 let's let's get home let's talk it out a little bit and then we can you know make a decision from there but ever since that it was pretty much set in stone um, that I was gonna come here For after sure. that day so you said that you're biomechanical engineering correct I, uh, biomedical biomedical engineering mm-hmm. all right and was that your first original major that you had when you came in so biomedical engineering was actually not I came into college as a uh, biochemistry major with a uh, co-major in pre-med and a minor in Spanish so I actually had uh, aspirations to go to med school one day and after my freshman year I uh, I don't know why I just kind of started questioning if pre-med was the right route for me Mm -hmm. and I was talking to my parents about it and um, my dad was also thinking about pre-med one day like taking the MCAT and doing all the the hard work for it and he was like Pre-med, if you're questionable about it, it's really hard. And if you're questionable about it, like, at all, then it may not be right for you because it's a lot of work, a lot Mm -hmm. of extra schooling, a lot of money. And I was like, yeah, and I'm not really sure if I like biochemistry. (laughs) I was a biochemistry major, but I was just doing it to go to med school. And Mm -hmm. I didn't really like um, biochemistry as much. And that summer between my freshman and sophomore year, I, uh, I built my first computer. I got really into technology. And I was like, I really like technology. I kind of want to get into this more. And so before my sophomore year, I made the decision to uh, switch to biomedical engineering uh, with a minor in bioinformatics. But it's been an awesome experience so far. All right. So biomedical engineering major and Mm -hmm. bioinformatics minor. Right. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. So before we like dig into more about it, what like just give a quick overview about what it is in in layman's terms. Yeah. So biomedical engineering, it's biomechanics, which is like you could think of it as robotics relating to the human body. Okay. So something that I want to do when I'm older in biomedical engineering is something called smart prosthetics, which is like. Think about like a prosthetic arm. Instead of making something that's like a simple plastic arm, I want to make something that actually moves Mm -hmm. and is smart and works with the human body. So that's why I get the term. That's how I explain biomedical engineering. It's essentially robotics, but for the human body. Got you. And then how does the uh, informatics part come So um, I would say that bioinformatics is the basis of it is more computer programming. But once you get to the harder classes, it gets honestly more genetics related. Um, It's like a mix of computer programming with genetics. Got you. And Mm -hmm. then were these two things 
did you know that they were going to fit so well together? Or how did you kind of like piece these I, two I, together? Uh, yeah, no, I definitely knew that they were going to go well together. Um, I thought that if I could somehow figure out how to design products mm-hmm. while also being able to program yeah. them at the same time, I figured those were two really good complementary mm-hmm. majors and minors. And uh, yeah, so that's why I decided to pick those together. Got you. And then what kind of research did you do leading up to the switch and like, oh yeah, biomedical engineering is what I want with this bioinformatics minor? Actually, this is kind of funny. So my girlfriend's dad is a computer programmer. Okay. And I would always um, go over to her place and he would be on his computer all day programming. And I would be like really interested in what he was doing. And Chloe, my girlfriend, she would say... Um, hey, quick shout out to Chloe. Yeah, quick, quick shout, shout out to Chloe. Chloe. <laughs> <laughs> um, she would say, uh, yeah, my dad knows like hundreds of different languages. And I'm like, what do you mean? How do you know hundreds of different languages? And then that's when I got really into computer programming. So I would say the research I did leading up to the switch was talking to, honestly, Chloe's dad yeah. about computer programming and as well as building the computer. Those mm-hmm. two things were what really spurred me really were eye-opening as far as like, am I in the right major? That's awesome. That's awesome, man. So now that we kind of have the groundwork and the foundation of what this is that you're doing in school, the classes you're taking, Mm -hmm. what kind of stuff outside of the classroom are you doing that relates to this? So I'm actually doing research. Um, I'm doing research under Dr. Chagdas in the mechanical engineering department. And so I started doing that uh, my sophomore year. And it was a really interesting experience because I had to reach out to multiple professors. Mm -hmm. And I um, talked to Dr. Chagdez, my research professor now, and we had a great conversation. And he talked to me about a few projects that we could be doing. And um, yeah, so that was kind of my intro into a research. What do you think kind of spurred this urge to go and do this research and start reaching out to all these professors? Because, you know, I mean... It's not like this opportunity just landed in your lap. Or right. Whatever. Yeah. I've always been one to think, you know, having a good GPA is is great. Mm-hmm. But um, I've always thought that it's what you have beyond the GPA is what separates yourself yeah. from other other students, whether it's getting a job opportunity, internship opportunities, stuff like that. Um, so and I thought research was a great, uh, honestly, a great resume booster. And Dr. Chag does like he can write me letter of Rex, for example. It's a great relationship to have beyond undergraduate mm-hmm. for grad school as well and into the future. So I think knowing that this relationship would just pay off in more than one way um, yeah. is why I wanted to get into research. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And then so now let's get into the into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Balance in virtual reality. Yes. That's the research project you're working on yes. right now. Tell me everything. Yes. I want to know. So I'm staying in Oxford doing research in the mechanical engineering department. And one of the things that me and Dr. Chagdas have done in the past is we've been looking at various models of balance. And we've been looking at these models, um, for example, in virtual reality. Mm -hmm. So what we're doing is testing these models in a virtual reality environment. And we're also either... I don't mean to interrupt you, but what do you mean by models? Uh, So balance models, I mean, like, um, when I say models, I mean, there's different ways to explain balance, right? So there's a bunch of different um, researchers and people that have tried to explain the best way to balance, mm-hmm. but there's like it's hard to define the correct way to balance, whether it's more on your heels, whether it's more on the uh, on front of your feet. So there's, it's hard to define um, the best way to uh, balance. So these models are something that we look at, whether we try to make our own models mm-hmm. or analyze other models in regards to balance. Gotcha. So when I say models, I say types of balancing okay. in general. Okay, mm-hmm. cool, cool, cool. All right, so what real world application does this have with the balance in virtual reality? Yeah. So, um, I actually have a virtual reality gaming headset. I I love it. And, and so in a virtual reality is something that's really up and coming. It's relatively new. I want to say within the past five years, Mm -hmm. it's a pretty new technology. And one of the more unknown aspects about it is balance and how your balance is affected because obviously you have something over your eyes and it feels like you're in a whole different environment. Mm -hmm. So how is your balance affected in a virtual reality? environment and that is something that we're looking at do you think this could lead to anything else or yeah uh yeah this definitely could like obviously right now i'm thinking smart prosthetics in the future um but right now i'm actually looking at going to graduate school here um and whether it's working with dr chagdas as um, my research professor so i think doing research as an undergraduate can lead for opportunities whether it's doing research for graduate school or letters of rec for other other graduate schools the smart prosthetics thing, mm-hmm. where, where does the motivation to, you know, work in that field mm-hmm. and create something like that come from? Mm-hmm. So I've always been one to be very into athletics and um, 
when I wanted to be a surgeon, I mm-hmm. did want to work with like arms and legs. And I don't think my love for that has gone yep. away. I think it's just changed forms. So I think essentially instead of doing surgeries on like arms or legs and something like that, I would like to do uh, like smart prosthetics on like mm-hmm. arms or legs. For example, I, I love snowboarding and Microsoft is doing a thing where they have a smart prosthetics that is able to fit into a boot and maintain balance mm-hmm. while someone is snowboarding. Mm-hmm. And part of me is like, I just want to work on that yeah, project so that, bad. That's not, bro, that sounds right up your alley. Yeah. That sounds right up your alley. No, I think you hit it right on the nose with the fact that even though, you know, the major that you started out with wasn't for you, the mm-hmm. passion and the drive to go to that major didn't go away. It just mm-hmm. changed forms. Like right. you said, it was perfect. So obviously uh, you have a lot on your plate. Mm-hmm. So what do you kind of do to in your free time to burn off some steam. I mean, I know you can't just be looking at data and graphs all day. Right, right. I I actually play a lot of video games. I would say video games is one of my passions, and I've always been an avid fan of video games, but I think I started to turn more into a hobby when I built my computer, actually. So that's something that I do in my off time. I'm a part of a fraternity, so I hang out at the um, with the guys a lot there and uh, have a good time there. So those are some of the things I do in my free time when I'm not doing schoolwork. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, so tell me more about you know you you found this passion for video games as well as like a, a, a side hobby, and I know you're part of the esports team. So give mm-hmm. me a little rundown about that. Yeah, so I joined the esports team last semester, and so last semester I realized that we weren't going to be able to go out as far as like uptown as much, mm-hmm. and every we we would have to like stay inside more. And I was trying to think of things to do in my apartment that mm-hmm. I could have fun with. And I found this game. Uh, I started playing this game the previous summer that I fell in love with, and it's called Valorant. And I got to school for first semester of my junior year, and they announced that they were going to start a Valorant team, and they were having open tryouts. And I was like, I may as well try Why out. Not? You know? Why not? Why not? Exactly. Um, so I ended up trying out, and I ended up making the team. And uh, ever since then, it's um, just been a fun experience. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what what kind of things consist of being a part of the esports team? So it's definitely a lot of practicing. I would say we have, I would say, two to three practices a week that are about two hours long. Yeah. Um, so I would say it's about 10 to 12 hours a week of playing with the team. And then I also try and put in some hours of playing like by myself or with mm-hmm. my friends. So it definitely does require a lot of time and, and uh, definitely is a big commitment, but it's probably one of the best experiences I've ever had playing a game with the team versus playing just by yourself yeah. or for friendly like competition. Mm-hmm. Cause we compete for scholarship money in these tournaments so we definitely have something to to win for instead of just playing for fun and having a good time. We all play for, we all have a drive to yeah. try and win scholarship money against these other schools. For sure. um, so playing on a in a competitive team environment is definitely the best aspect of it, and it's it is demanding, but it's also a great time. Yeah, I can speak from firsthand experience that I've seen you play. It's a very confusing game, but you know once you kind of get the general idea of what's going yeah. on, you know, it's super entertaining. And, you know, we're always rooting for you, bro. Whenever, <laughs> Thank you. Whenever it's going on. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, and I don't know if it's been going on this year, obviously, because of COVID. Mm-hmm. But one of the first things I knew about you when we first got to know each other was that you were on the water ski team mm-hmm. as well. Um, so kind of just give us a rundown about that. Yeah, well. you know, and I want to give a shout out to the water ski team. The water ski team was the first club that I joined on mm-hmm. campus my freshman year. It was like my first leap of faith. Yeah. It was where I formed my first friends that I'm still friends with today. So joining the water ski team was definitely one of the biggest decisions I made. But I've always been, a, I love wakeboarding. I'm a huge fan of lakes. Um, and so I was like, if I could do something like that in my free time in college, like that'd be awesome. And yeah. then I found out there was a water ski team. And I fell in love with the the people, the environment, and we go to various lakes in the Midwest, uh, like I want to say four or five weekends in a row mm-hmm. in the fall. So we compete against these other schools and events, whether it's slalom, trick, or jump. And me, myself, I was on the trick team, so that was a lot of fun. Yeah, jack of all trades, yes. Gabe Lenneman. <laughs> and it all it all came from that, you know, leap of faith to step out of the comfort yeah, zone. Definitely. So definitely. How, how important, not just for getting into clubs, but just in general, how important do you think you know, stepping out of that comfort zone is for students? I think it's very important. I think in high school, I had a lot of like regret of not doing clubs like this. And in college, I wanted to change that. It definitely was a hard decision at first. But once you make that first decision to get out of your comfort zone, the rest of the decisions are a lot easier. Definitely. So like joining the water ski team, going to the lake day the first time, meeting all these new people, 
I don't think I've ever been more nervous in my yeah. life, but it made all the other times meeting new people and joining new clubs just that much easier. Exactly. Um, so I think for new people, uh, for new students coming in, definitely joining the one club and every joining any club after that or any student organization just gets a lot easier. And it's, I can guarantee you will never regret it because uh, it's going to be a good experience. Cool. If you could sit down with your freshman yourself, first day of college, you know, what, what advice are you giving to him? What are you telling him? I would say don't be scared to change your major. Mm-hmm. I would say change your hair a little bit <laughs> and uh, and definitely don't be afraid to take a leap of faith. For <laughs> sure, bro. That sounds like a great place to stop. Thank you so much for coming on, Gabe. Thank you very much for having me, man. Gabe Lenneman is a senior majoring in biomedical engineering and minoring in bioinformatics and plans to attend graduate school next year. And thank you for listening to Major Insight. If you enjoyed this podcast, share with your friends or anyone interested in navigating college life. Many more episodes are now available wherever you get your podcasts.